Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video we're going to be going over myxedema coma. This video is part of an endocrine series, NCLEX review, specifically over the thyroid and I've been covering hypo and hyperthyroidism, thyroid storm, Graves disease. So if you're interested in those videos, be sure to check those out and a card should be popping up so you can access them. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do an NCLEX review of the things you need to know about myxedema coma. I'm going to go over the causes, the signs and symptoms and the nursing interventions along with medications. Now after this video, be sure to go to my website registernursern.com and take the free quiz that'll test you on this condition. So let's get started. First let's talk about what myxedema coma is. What is the definition of it? It is a life-threatening condition that occurs in patients with hypothyroidism. It presents with severely low thyroid hormones. So what is the thyroid gland? What are thyroid hormones? Let's go back to the basics because if we can understand this, we can understand the signs and symptoms and why we're doing certain nursing interventions. Okay, your thyroid gland, it's located over the trachea right below the larynx, the voice box where the laryngeal prominence is. And it is a butterfly shaped gland and it produces thyroid hormone and it does it through the negative feedback loop. So let me go over this with you real fast. You have the hypothalamus which produces TRH, thyroid tropin releasing hormone. This causes the anterior pituitary gland to release thyroid stimulating hormone which is TSH and this causes that thyroid gland to release T3 and T4. Now, your thyroid cannot produce thyroid hormones without iodine. So we get iodine through our food. So if we're not taking in enough iodine, we can enter into hypothyroidism, which could eventually lead to this condition. Now, what does T3 and T4 do? What's the role of it? Because if you can understand what it does normally, you can understand if we don't have enough of it, why the body looks the way it does. Okay, normally it helps us burn calories. It determines how fast new cells replace dying cells, how fast we digest our food, um, it, it stimulates our sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for our alertness, our responses, our reflexes, keeps our body temperature increase along with our heart rate and blood pressure, brain development, and thyroid stimulating hormone regulation. Now, what can cause myxedema coma? Causes. Risk factor for this. For some reason, this tends to run in elderly women with hypothyroidism. We talked about in the hypothyroidism video that women tend to have hypothyroidism. So it makes sense that in myxedema coma, elderly women would suffer from this. Now, so they're elderly and they have hypothyroidism and if they get sick, like a respiratory or a urinary, infect, urinary tract infection or have external stress on the body or internal stress like a myocardial infarction or taking a medication like lithium. Lithium, commit this to memory, inhibits thyroid hormone release. So it can decrease your thyroid hormones. So those are risk factors for that. Also, sedatives. People with hypothyroidism, if they take sedatives, that's why you don't want to give them sedatives, it could send them into this condition. And having taking too much of antithyroid hormones, which is used to treat hyperthyroidism, can send them into this. Not taking um, hormone replacement, maybe they're prescribed to take Synthroid and they feel like it's not helping so they just quit taking it and they're not getting any hormone replacement so they enter into this myxedema coma. And also removal of the thyroid gland. So again, let's just recap. Causes, it's most likely to affect your elderly women who have hypothyroidism. However, anyone with hypothyroidism who experience these things can go into myxedema coma. Now let's go over the signs and symptoms. How is a patient going to present to you as a nurse? What are those main signs and symptoms you really need to know for exams? Okay, they're typically going to have the typical signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, but this is going to be severe, exaggerated, and everything in the body is literally slowing down to the point of death. Now don't get this condition confused with thyroid storm, which is a um, complication that happens with hyperthyroidism. I like to remember that condition, I covered it in the other video, that thyroid storm 
is like a violent storm coming on the body at an accelerated rate. So that deals with hyperthyroidism because you have lots of thyroid hormones. Now this is with hypothyroidism. And just remember the word coma. Everything is literally slowing down to the point of death going into a coma. So what you're gonna have, you're gonna have hypothermia. Instead of just being intolerant to cold, like with normal hypothyroidism, you're going to be, your temperatures are gonna to drop to dangerous temperature readings. Um, you're gonna have mixed edema, which is swelling of tissues that has like a waxy appearance or an orange peel texture of the eyes and face. That's a telltale sign of someone with hypothyroidism. Um, decreased blood pressure and heart rate to dangerous levels. They'll be very drowsy that will progress maybe to a coma. Uh, most likely will have respiratory failure and these patients are gonna be in the ICU and they're gonna be on ventilators. Another thing, remember these two things. These are really important that a lot of people don't think of when everything about mixed edema coma. It's one of the telltale signs of this. They're gonna have hyponatremia. One of the reasons for this, this is a low sodium, is due to having an increased antidiuretic hormone. In this condition, they can have an increased antidiuretic hormone, which is ADH, and this causes the body to conserve water. Now, if we're conserving water, we're watering down our sodium levels in our body, so we're gonna get low sodium. And it's also due to the decreased glomular filtration rate, which is because the kidneys aren't getting as much blood flow as they normally get, because remember, we have low heart rate, low blood pressure, everything is slowing down, so they're not getting being able to filter out as right as, as correctly as they should. Also, another thing that they'll have is hypoglycemia, a low blood sugar. And this is due to the decreased metabolism rate. And remember, everything's slowing down. The body, T3 and T4, plays a role in our meta metabolism function. And it just slowed down. So that decreases um, the need for glucogenesis. Okay, now nursing interventions. What are you gonna do for this patient as the nurse? Like I said, this patient's gonna be in ICU most likely. Uh, you're gonna monitor their heart rate, their blood pressure, EKG, temperatures, respiratory status continuously. Uh, administer medications. What, what do these patients normally get? Well, they're hyponatremic usually. So um, the physician may order IV fluids to help correct that and correct that cardiovascular collapse because everything is just collapsing. So they may be started on normal saline or a hypertonic solution. And if you're not familiar with that and how those work on the body, I have a whole NCLEX review on that. A card should be popping up so you can access that where I talk about isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions. Also, um, they'll be given intravenous, intravenous thyroid hormones, known as usually most common is Synthroid. However, one thing you need to remember about Synthroid, commit this to memory, Synthroid can cause adrenal insufficiency by increasing the metabolism of the glucocorticoids. So, so corticosteroids may be ordered on top of this to help prevent that because Synthroid can cause adrenal insufficiency. And also, whenever you have the patient on Synthroid, watch out for toxicity because we're replacing their thyroid hormones. So we could send them into hyperthyroidism. Signs and symptoms of that would be increased heart rate, sweaty, hot, high blood pressure, things like that. And also with these patients, remember that this, people with hypothyroidism are very sensitive to sedatives. It could be a cause of mixed edema coma. So absolutely no sedatives for these patients. Um, warming blankets as prescribed. They may need some IV glucose for their hypoglycemia as ordered by the physician. So that is about mixed edema coma. Now go to my website, registerednursern.com and take the free quiz. And also be sure to check out the other thyroid NCLEX review videos. And thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.